Hi, it's Marcy and welcome back. Today's episode is all about making garden-inspired, stylish paper mache bowls. Let's do this. The few items that you'll need to make these gorgeous paper mache bowls are bowls. I have featured here a plastic bowl, two ceramics, as well as an old base. It's a globe from an old lamp base. You need some Vaseline, tin foil, and some handmade paper. We also have glue, as well as a container to put the glue, a brush. And without further ado, let's just dive out into our project. We've got some bowls to make. For starters, I wanna begin by taking my bowls. Now the bowls, they should be wider at the top than at the base. If you're using plastic, you have no need to wrap them in tin foil, but mine are ceramic, so I'm wrapping mine in tin foil like so. And I actually put first a layer of Vaseline on the bottom. And you're gonna do this as tightly as possible against the ceramic or whatever bowl you're using. Same thing here. I'm going to mix my PVA glue with a little bit of water. Dilute it just a tad, mix it up well. All right, now, this is where the part gets fun. We're going to take our paper. Now this is, I have sheets of different styles of handmade paper. If you have a style of paper that you would prefer to use, that's great. You can use mulberry paper, rhododendron paper. This is the different types of handmade paper. So you can easily buy that if you want to, or you can make it to the bottom layer I'm going to put this lovely fish paper. I really love this. This is gonna be on the outside. And I'm gonna tear this. So this is how I'm gonna use it. Not too big of sheets, but I'm gonna leave that as like a, a deckled edge that's gonna go right around the edge here and I'm gonna leave it rough. So the fish side is gonna go on the outside because when you lift the bowl out, that's the side that you're gonna be seeing. Okay, while this one is drying a little bit, I'm gonna start on a second and even a third one. All right, so for my second one, what I'm gonna do is my paper has two different colors. One on, this is like a light blue or turquoise on one side and a purple on the other. And I'm gonna just put the aqua on the outside. I'm gonna use this gorgeous handmade paper. It has like little, um, it looks like little leaves or something in there. It, that's what it is, it's little leaves. So this is the right side of the paper and this is, quote, uh, well, it looks like the wrong side, it's a little lighter. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is put this in like so. All right, we're back and this has been drying quite nicely. I'm going to add in some deckled edge right here. And this is more handmade paper. You can see this, the texture of this is very pretty. And add it into this one. All right, I'm gonna set this aside to dry. 
and let's check on our others here. Let me see. This is doing quite nicely. What I think I may do is, let me see. I'm going to put the white on in the inside here, but just around the edges that you're gonna see a tinge of the white, not around everything though. And I'll show you what I'm gonna do. And then I'll take the aqua and put it in the interior so we're kind of making a nice little sandwich showing the different colors. This is gonna be very, very pretty. I changed my mind in terms of using the aqua in the interior part. I think I'm going to just use the white and keep it the purple on the outside. I'm just finishing up the interior part of our bowl with the fish on the exterior. As you recall, we had the layer of the fish, which was this, oh, let me see if I can get this better, uh, this paper right here. And then I put the white, the white handmade paper. Now is the calligraphy. And this is so pretty, it has a gorgeous emblem, great detail. And we're gonna let that dry. I lifted my koi designed bowl out of the mold and I applied more koi and red paper here. Okay, so it seems very durable. And I'm going to add one more layer on the outside. and then let it sit here to dry, okay? At the same time, I'm also going to release these others from their mold so that they can also get more air time as well as we'll do the, uh, the underside. Oh, wow, that came out nicely. Look at that. Wow, that's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And that's really pretty, that's pretty stiff, but no, actually, you know, it's a little flimsy there but that's to be expected and it's still a little damp. This is now day three, okay? So we're passing, uh, the, we're on 72 hours here and that's normal. Now I waited 72 hours for this I, as I'm doing this right now, but this one I did yesterday, I got a little greedy and I really didn't feel like waiting any longer. So I took it out, it was quite damp. The form was quite damp, the underside of the mold, but that's okay. I mean, I, you know, you kind of deal with it and do what you gotta do. So, wow, nice. I have a little bit of this paper left. Um, I'm gonna use that. And let me see, doo -doo. no. I'm gonna use what I have. I'm not going out and buying anything else. I've had this paper for probably 10 years now. And this is a great chance to use this. Love the look of the handmade paper. All right, so for the koi, let me get myself organized. Let's continue the koi. Now this is gonna probably be our final layers here. Okay, we're finishing up here. I'm adding my last layer and it's looking really good, all right? Yours should be pretty thick by now also. Now, if you're using a patterned paper and it has like design elements on it, you may want to strategically place those elements on your bowl because if it's your last layer, you're not gonna be wanting to cover up, let's say the fish with a red, you wanna be covering, you want to be having uh, the element be pretty apparent as the last layer. So as you can see here, 
I've got fish pretty obviously placed here in different areas. And there's parts of fish in some areas, but that can't be helped. Um, so that's, that's that. So what I'm gonna do is put this one right here, I think. Maybe right here, actually. Okay. And then we're gonna put it aside to dry. Look at that. Is that beautiful or that's just so gorgeous? Oh, so delicate looking, but yet, look at the edges. So pretty. All right. For this particular bowl, I don't have enough of the original paper that I started out with. Now, what I'm gonna do is I have another paper that I'm gonna use to bulk this up a little bit more, make it stiffer, make it more firm, and then I'm going to cover it with the remainder. Now, that's my option, your option as well, and if you want, you can actually finish off with this type of paper that's a little different. You don't have to have the same paper, uh, but I know that I'm running a little slim, so I'm going to use this other paper, which kind of coordinates with this. All right, I went around twice with the golden leafed paper, and it's very, very beautiful as it is. I could actually stop here if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna continue my journey with this particular bowl, covering it with the same paper that was done for the inside. I'm actually, whoops, that's not gonna help matters. Um, and I'm actually gonna do it right now. I'm gonna actually start it right now and finish it off. I'm on my last round here for my blue bowl. Actually, it's like an aqua more or less, I guess. Okay, look at this. These are looking really nice. Super, super nice. Very excited. Look at that. So pretty. Really hard. Look at this one. Love this one. Super adorable. I love the size, love the texture, the color, very adorable. Nice for chips. Okay. Let's put these aside. What I'm going to do is remove this one right here. And this is the one that we did with a little bit of paper mache right here. And now put this bowl aside. So I think I'm going to use the green, this olive green for this one. And for the grass, I'm going to use this one right here. I think that would be really pretty. I could, I mean, you can't go wrong. They're all very, very nice. So I'm going to go off camera, cut this into strips, and I'll be right back. So I have this gorgeous bowl, and it has a calligraphy inside it. And the other one that I have left over to finish on the outside is this beautiful one that I took out of the old lamp phobe. Right now we're going to work with this one. Put that over there. Put this over here to dry. That's looking very pretty, isn't it? And I'm going to go on to our next one. Our final one, and that is our handmade, it's kind of like grass inside. Okay. I'll just easily access the sides. Okay, we're finishing up here, and we're going to let this dry. Most likely, this is going to take at least 24, 36 hours to completely, completely dry. Maybe less, maybe 24 might be good. But in terms of sealing it, that will be at least 36 hours, I'm sure. This is a good time to check and make sure that there's no flyaways, no bubbles, things that are kind of unsightly. And that's what I'm doing now. I'm gonna let it dry. 
and we'll be back. So we have one of these to dry and this grass cloth one to dry and we'll be back. The other item I wanted to tell you about was the matte medium, which I mixed with a little bit of powder. It's a gold powder. And I kind of wanted to give a little glitz to my edges here. It's not necessary, but I really wanted to kind of like jazz them up a little bit. Not a big deal. If you don't have it, you don't want to go out and buy it, that's okay. Anyway, that was just something as an extra, as an optional. And I also did it in a couple of them over here as well. It's very subtle. And with that, the last, very last thing is if you want to complete your project and seal it with something food grade, you can use a resin. I'm going to actually opt to use that for the interior part of the bowl where food touches because I don't want to have to use a napkin. And it will be fully cured. You need to read the directions thoroughly, do your own research, but purportedly that is a food safe resin. It has been approved for food. And on the outside, I'm going to be using the Minwax Polycrylic. Another product out there by Zinzer, it's a shellac. And I believe you can get it on Amazon. I've seen it on there if they have it in stock. It's a bright yellow can. It's put out by Zinzer, which is owned by Rust-Oleum. And the shellac is made by a something called the lac bug and it's out of India. So if you are interested in any of those finishes, again, do your research. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a beautiful day. Cheers.